hi guys welcome to my channel so today i will be doing a video on how i bought a home at 21 and i'm gonna give you a few tips that i feel like might be able to help you you have to keep in mind that i'm in maryland so every state is different and you know every loan is different but we're gonna get right into it so as you know buying a home is not easy like it's not easy at all um most of the time people usually don't buy homes until like they're 30 years old anyway or 40 sometimes people never even get a chance to buy a home so no it's not easy so the first thing when looking for a home you need to realize that it's going to be more than just your mortgage so when you're on zillow looking at all those nice houses and you're scrolling down looking at um the mortgage amount and it's like oh it's only 900 dollars or something you need to factor and it's going to actually be a couple more hundred than that because some places have hoa meaning um they want their community to have their grass cut on a certain day you know um landscaping all that good stuff that they are going to do for you but you need to pay to be in that community with your house um they have homeowners insurance that's going to be added into your mortgage payment well plus your mortgage payment your homeowners insurance you have the pmi which is your primary mortgage insurance and all of that is going to add in so maybe like an extra three or four hundred dollars most of the time so you definitely need to factor in debt you also need to factor in taxes that is another bill that is going to be added in some companies allow you to pay it one time a year and a lot of times that's also not the case in here lately because some people decide okay i'm just going to pay it at the end of the year then the end of the year comes and you're like oh i don't have the money so now everyone's screwed so they a lot of times break it up into every month so that is how mine is broken up into i wanted to pay it one time but they were like no you need to pay it every month so that there's no way for you to get by it so that's another thing that's going to be added into your um your monthly bill not just your mortgage the next thing we're going to talk about are loans so the conventional loan is a lo very popular loan the next is i would say the fha loan which is a first-time home buyer loan and that is what i got because i'm a first-time home buyer and yeah when i heard all the benefits and all that i was like yeah give me that because i need all the help that i can and i want this process as smooth as possible with my first home so if you're in the military you can get a military loan there's a different process with every loan so i definitely recommend you to get a real estate agent or something so that she can help you through because if you were like me I was the first one that bought a home out of my siblings and my parents so i didn't really know much about it so i needed some type of guidance when i bought my home and my agent really helped me and to be honest my process was very smooth because of that also would advise you to go through a home loan company versus your bank see a lot of people that didn't know much about buying a house they told me oh you already have a um a bank account with so and so bank go with them so i went with that bank i found out that they're only trying to give me a little it just was not a smooth thing so i talked to my realtor she gave me a very good home loan company and i went with them and it was perfect and another they, reason that i say it's best to go with the home loan company because that's what they do all day so they really want to help you and get you in a home you know get you that loan so you can move um a regular bank they don't really do that on a daily i mean they slither around and they do help out with that a little but they don't do that 24 7 so why not go with a company that does it 24 7 versus someone that does it here and there that just makes more sense to me that i did not know was it's so much easier to get a home if you're a w-2 employee meaning you work for someone else versus if you're self-employed the reason i say that is because these companies that are giving you a loan they need to know all your history as far as how much you're making your hours um your steady income they need to know every single thing like it's a long process they want to know every inch of everything of your financial situation and all for the last couple years and it's so much easier to just call up your job and say hey uh, what were they doing in this year or look at your w-2s and see how much you were making versus you having to um pull up all your documents from two or three years ago or say you had an up and down time where you were making hundreds of dollars this month and this month you only made fifty dollars you're gonna have to be able to prove that you're gonna be able to pay this mortgage every month 
And I mean, who wants to really give someone thousands and thousands of dollars and be skeptical about if you're even going to be able to keep a job or if you're even going to be able to pay them their money every month. So that is something that you need to think about before you even go to buy a house. Like, were these last couple years even consistent of me keeping a job? Like, was it even a good amount of money that I was making to afford this house? Because they're looking at all of that. Like, not for right now, how much you're making. Like, oh, I'm making good money now. But they're looking at your past, too, to see if you're able to keep this pattern going of making good money. And so the next thing is closing costs. You need to make sure you're saving up for your closing costs before you even go and look for a home because your process could be like mine and only take about a month and closing costs are thousands of dollars. What are you going to do when your closing cost date comes in 30 days and you don't have the extra thousand dollars or a couple thousand dollars? You're not going to be able to get your home. Your, your process is going to be pushed back more and it's just no. You need to make sure your money is saved up good before you even go start looking for a home. And if you don't know what closing is, closing is when you put an offer in on your home, your offer gets accepted by the seller. So now you go through a ton of paperwork that usually takes about 30 days. Sometimes it takes people six months. I've heard of crazy stories because you have a lot of ups and downs throughout the process. But during that 30 days, a lot takes place. They're checking your credit, your financial situation. Like they check every inch of your basically life, like every inch of your financial everything from the last couple of years. They check everything. So the reason you have closing costs are because in, during that little bit of time, the 30 days or six months or whatever, you have to have inspections on your property. They come in and inspect your house to make sure everything is working right, you know, things that maybe they didn't put in the paperwork, you know, just check over the whole house. They have appraisals, which is when they determine the value of your house. Before they give you a loan, they have to do an appraisal, meaning so someone can't just be like, um, I'm going to charge you a million dollars for this house that the value is only $5,000. So that is what the appraisal is for. So you're just basically not getting got, if that makes sense. Like someone can't just come in and just take your money for something your property is not even worth it. So that is a very, that is a very good thing. But all that costs money. Um, you're going to have title fees, meaning like how when you buy a car, your name is on the title. It's the same thing for a house. Your name is on your house. That's a title fee from your title company. Um, your insurance, that's going to be more than likely included in your closing costs, your first. And they also have your loan costs is the person that is doing all that hard work in, you know, your underwriter, the person that's behind the scenes doing all your paperwork for that whole 30 to 60 months. You have to pay them because they're working hard it's like you're sitting over there stressing and all they're working hard stressing too so you have to pay them for their time and work too i'm gonna go back to loans really quick so if you buy a house that is like a hundred eighty thousand two hundred thousand three hundred thousand anything like that usually it's gonna take you 15 20 30 years to pay it off because i don't know if you had that kind of money but i don't have that kind of money but it's usually gonna take you about that long to pay it off and when you get that loan from a company, they have to get paid too. So they're going to charge you interest. And the way to kind of go around interest is I would say if your mortgage payment is like $1,300, I would advise you to put like $1,350 down every single month because that extra $50 for one, it adds up. And for two, it's going to literally knock off like five or six years. To be honest, it could be more than that. Like even if you put $3 down, it could knock off months of when you would normally pay it off. So if you were going to pay the house off normally, like your normal time would be like 2050 then by you paying the extra 50 you might be able to pay it off in, at 2040 Like that might be the year that you're able to pay it off just by that simple extra $50 that you paid every month. And that automatically cuts off some of your interest buy the house earlier like it just works out so much better i definitely advise you to put down more every month than your actual payment because it just cuts off so much time and so much interest and you get your house paid off years earlier like that's definitely a pointer that i would advise you to do so another thing i want to say is you need to 
expect that there are going to be a lot of ups and downs it's not going to be a smooth walk luckily my process was not bad at all but it definitely was a like my anxiety was just going up and down like it was crazy because one day i'll call like hey is everything going okay they're like yeah it's going perfect then tomorrow they're like hey so we were going through everything and the underwriter said that you need to turn in three or four more documents because we need to verify this. So now you're scrambling around trying to pull up these documents from years ago. And it's just like, what if I don't get these documents in? Then you won't have a house. So that's very stressful. I mean, I remember I was down to like my last week or two. And they were like, hey, we're missing one W-2. So I'm running around H&R Block everywhere trying to find this last document. I could not find it. it nobody seems to know where it's at. It was just so stressful. And I'm like two weeks from having to move out of my apartment and move into this house. So it was just so crazy. So like I said, um, you're always going to be on the phone. You're always going to be signing e-documents. Meaning so you don't have to go in person. You get your documents sent to your email. You can sign them digitally. Um... They were calling my job nonstop, trying to verify more information, stuff that they already asked a thousand times. Um, everything just has to line up perfectly in order for you to get a house. Like, because that is one of the biggest purchases you will make in your life. A house. Seriously. That is one of the biggest purchases you will make. So everything has to line up perfectly. It's definitely not an easy process. So closing day. I was so excited I couldn't even cry. I couldn't even cry happy tears. I was just so excited. Oh my gosh, it's a very good feeling. It's a very, very good feeling because I'm only 21 years old. And neither one of my parents bought a home yet. Um, my siblings didn't buy a home yet. So I was kind of like the thrown out to the wolves a little bit. I didn't know much, but all I knew was I wanted to buy a home. I was tired of paying $1,200 rent. So it was just like, I need to buy a home. That's what I really want to do. And I just went for it. I do advise you to get a real estate agent if it's your first time because they help you out a lot. And your first time, you don't have a clue what you're doing, to be honest. You don't have a clue what you're doing unless you have somebody in your family doing or something. You have no clue, to be honest. So you would want somebody to be in your ear, giving you advice, helping you out so that you're not just going to buy a house just to say you have a house. And then two years down the line, your roof falls in and it's just a disaster so yeah definitely advise you to get an agent to help you out the first time around so yeah guys that wraps up this video i hope you learned something from this video or you can use a few tips i'm not a professional at all i'm only 21 years old that was my first time buying a home i just felt that i should go through a few things that i went through a few things that i did not know that, you, that could help you out so if you have any more questions, just comment down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And also, if you have questions and you don't feel like commenting, just look in the description box, find my Instagram or TikTok or something, and just send me a message. All right, bye.